Hi there, and welcome to my new series, which is called Wardrobe DNA, where I break down my wardrobe according to the origin of each piece. So is the piece secondhand, is it vintage, big brand, fast fashion, small brand, that sort of thing. In today's episode, we are going over all of my bags, which I have uh, accumulated a lot of them. So I'm looking forward to showing you all of my interesting bags. So for the first of our bags, we're starting with one of my favorites, which is this amazing navy needlepoint vintage bag. This bag, according to the seller, which is a seller on Depop, I'll link them, uh, it is a 1960s vintage bag, right? It's a pouch, it looks like machine needlepoint on the front of this beautiful flower, and it seems to be cast resin or just plastic for the handles. On the inside, there is this incredible vintage print. It looks very, very vintage here, right? It does not look like a recent print at all. And I don't mean just the quality of the, the colors, but I mean the actual print itself. And it's made by, oh, what's the name? The Flying Needles from Florida, where I'm from. How cool. I've never seen another bag like this out in the wild. I'm sure there are some out there, but it's very unique. Uh, it's one of the reasons I really love this bag. It works for the office. It works for just going out for dinner. Love it. One of my favorite bags for sure. And the origin is vintage, 1960s. Okay, so for our next bag, we have my wonderfully sophisticated work bag. I got this bag about seven years ago, so it's my, my longest held bag. It is a top handle leather purse by Furla. And I originally got it when I was consulting because I was traveling a lot and this bag amazingly fits a 13 inch laptop. I also really like that it has this detachable handle or uh, strap rather. I think that it's very versatile. I love structured bags and I love gold hardware. <laughs> so for this bag, uh, the origin is definitely big brands because Verla is a big brand. And I wanted to note that I love this bag so much that I actually had a leather worker work on it recently. He worked on the strap, which was cracking a bit because it's leather. And he also replaced the entire front panel with new cardboard so that the bag has more structure because it was kind of curving in. So uh, I hope to have this bag for much longer as well because it has done me so good for all of these years I've been working in an office and traveling. So for our next bag, we have something a little different. We have my only backpack. So this backpack is made of cork. It's a dark green color and it has, let's say brass looking hardware. At least the color is brass. And it's made by Le Fleur, which is a French small brand. Uh, I actually bought this through a Kickstarter. You can now buy this bag just through their website. But I use this only almost exclusively for the one or two flights I take a year. I don't travel much lately in my life. Um, so I'll put my laptop, all of my uh, electronics in here, like my switch, <laughs> and it all fits perfectly because this band expand this because this bag expands a lot. It's very versatile. There's lots of different straps that you can put this way and that. Uh, I would recommend this bag for anyone who doesn't travel like a lot, but you want a really cute bag. I wouldn't use this bag every day because the straps are a little bit thin, but I do really enjoy how elegant it looks. So because this is a Kickstarter brand, right, Le Fleur, this is definitely a small brand. Okay, our next bag <laughs> is this very uh, elegant and simple camera bag. So I just got a new camera. I replaced my Canons with a Sony a7 III. Uh, the upgrade so exciting. I am recording on that camera right now. And I wanted a nice camera bag to put that camera in. I don't really like the, the black canvas or like plastic bags that cameras come with. So I wanted something that just is leather, long lasting, and that could probably match a lot of different things. I just want something cute. So I got this bag from Low & Sons, which is a small company. It has a padded interior. It's very cavernous, I guess you could say. It fits my camera perfectly. I really like this bag so far. Hopefully it serves me well over time. Definitely small brand. We are now moving on to our squishy bag section. Yes, they have their own section. So we're going to start off with this amazing 
pink squishy bag, which is by Offbeat Sweet, a small uh, brand here in New York City. This bag is so cute. It's Barbie pink, which is no secret, my favorite color. It's as squishy as it looks, both the handle, which is a, a chain handle, and the actual bag area. It also has a very interesting closure, which uh, it closes through friction, essentially, with this long, uh, this little loop and then this long piece here, right? Uh, the bag is, of course, big enough, too, for your giant phone cases. Is it just me? <laughs> I love having giant phone cases. It goes with the outfit. So this amazing bag is certainly a small brand. The next of our squishy bags. They're all incredible, but I really love this one. This is so squishy, so cool. I love this bag. This is by Marshall Columbia, uh, another small designer here in New York City. This bag has little beads at the front of it. It has plenty of room in here, actually. And it has this big squishy handle. I love the orange. I've been really interested in orange lately, if you can't tell. <laughs> Not only is it comfortable, but it, it is certainly eye-catching and it starts a lot of interesting conversations. Another small brand. Our last of the squishy bags. We have this <laughs> giant marshmallow squishy bag. It's essentially a pillow. This is by My Mom Made It. And I'm amazed that this bag is still so light because I use it all the time. <laughs> It is a big bag for sure. It has actually two sets of straps, one for your, if you wanna wear it over your shoulder or one for your hand. Uh, there's a ton of room in here. There's pockets, there's a zipper. It's just, it's everything. <laughs> use it to take a nap, use it to put your clothes in. My mom made it is a small brand. So this also goes into the small brand category. I love my squishy bags so much. All right, we're moving on to a very special section. This is the Susan Alexandra section. <laughs> All right, so I'll show you the first one and explain. Susan Alexandra. This is a butterfly bag. This has cute little beaded butterflies on it, and it's a structured bag made entirely out of plastic beads, very reminiscent of childhood, and that is very much what Susan Alexandra is about. This bag, I'm always wondering, do these will these bags fit my phone? <laughs> It does. <laughs> uh, it fits everything that I need it to fit. I love that it is structurally sound. I love that uh, the colors haven't changed at all since I got this bag. I thought, hmm, are the plastic beads going to discolor? But they really haven't. And the structure has stayed exactly the same. I love this cute bag. I really do feel like I'm back in the 90s making little beaded creatures. <laughs> I need to put a picture of those up so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I really enjoy this, this, mm, this revisiting childhood with this very cute bag. Like I said, by Susan Alexandra, so this is yet again a small brand. The next Susan Alexandra bag we have is the most amazing non-functional bag that I own. It is incredible. It is, I can't even pick it up. <laughs> this amazing beaded bag uh, by Susan Alexandra it is called the firework bag, and I'm gonna show you why. Because <laughs> it looks like firework. <laughs> this bag is amazing. It is reminiscent of childhood, especially if you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s. It is joyful. Uh, when I opened the package containing this bag, I literally laughed <laughs> from joy just because of how ridiculous and amazing this bag is. Uh, it truly is the most amazing bag that I have. It actually has a lot of room. I wonder if you can hear me with all the jingling. This bag actually has a lot of room inside of it. Maybe you can see. Uh, I got it for my three year anniversary with my fiance and I wore a very sparkly red outfit to stick out. So this bag was perfect for it. So to finish up the Susan Alexandra section, uh, I want to show this little wallet. This wallet is made from beads and it looks like a picnic blanket and it has a little beaded ant on the front. It is so cute. I've had it for a few years now and uh, it looks exactly the same as the day I got it. It's still super clean. There's no discoloring on the beads. Uh, none of the beads have fallen off. I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed, honestly. So I must mention that this wallet is just 
cute, perfect, and of course, I always get so many compliments on it. I love this cute little bag. Wallet. We're gonna move on to a, a new section. These are kind of smallish handbags. Our first of the small handbags is this amazing little pouch. It looks like a needlepoint pouch, most likely machine made. I am so proud of finding this bag. Why? Because I originally saw the same sort of bag, the same design at a vintage shop in Bushwick a few years ago. It was dead stock, meaning it was completely new. No one had used it before. It's just been in storage since its actual creation. Um, and I have always regretted not buying that bag. So years later, I actually spotted this at the Chelsea Flea in Manhattan, and I immediately grabbed it. <laughs> I was like, I must have this bag. I've been looking for this bag for years, and I finally found a very good quality version of it. Uh, there's some pretty poorly poor quality versions of this bag online, but I found this very good one. I love this little bag. It actually fits my phone in it um, and my keys and my wallet and everything else. It's so cute. I love how vintage it looks. It's just the perfect little bag uh, because it's vintage. Yes, it goes in the vintage category. What year? Uh, I will look this up and put the year on the screen. I'm not quite sure about that one, but finally got this cute little bag. The next bag is a very interesting vintage piece from the 1950s. I got this at Seven Wonders Vintage in Greenpoint, so that's in Brooklyn, New York. This bag is a brown leather handbag, and I've never seen anything quite like it before. It is very boxy in shape, and it has this very interesting handle. It also came with a matching coin purse. I also like this interesting clasp on the front of it, really unlike anything I've seen. It's also very spacious. Uh, this is one of my most complimented bags, interestingly enough. I mean, I have a lot of weird bags. Maybe this one's just like not weird enough <laughs> that like the general public likes it. But yeah, I think that people can also recognize that there's something different about this bag. It looks different than anything you might see today. It definitely is old though. It's got a lot of cracked leather. Um, probably I should take it to a leather worker for them to kind of revitalize it, but one of my favorite bags. I think I say that about all of them, but yes, I love this, using this bag. Our next bag is so cute. It's this tiny little bag, which is by For Bitches Only. And it is so cute that it only fits my wallet and keys. It does not fit my phone, but I don't care because it's the perfect blue color. It's the perfect little handbag size. It is perfect for so many outfits. I just love how tiny this bag is. Uh, I got it from Cafe Forgot, which you may know is one of my favorite places in New York City. It is a shop that focuses on experimental fashion in the Lower East Side. I love going there. This is called the Boo Bag, also the perfect name for it. Uh, and if you just love form over function, <laughs> you should get this very cute bag. <laughs> Okay, so this is also a small brand. Small brand for bitches only company. So we have this very interesting bag by Scotria. This bag is made from upcycled plexiglass on the outside with a leather pouch for the interior. And there are these silicone cords holding it all together. Uh, we also have a, a long strap if you wanna wear it kind of as a shoulder bag. I am a big fan of Scotria's guiding principles, which their website so beautifully goes over. They focus on sustainability, reusing old materials, and recycling. However, I do feel ambivalent about this bag, meaning that I have mixed feelings. Although I like Scotria's values and guiding principle, I am not a big fan of the bag itself. It is so not functional. It's uncomfortable to wear because of the plexiglass, right? And it's very hard to get inside to your stuff. Uh, it always takes me a while to get anything out of this bag. And then when I'm walking around with it, just it's not comfortable on my, my hip if I'm wearing it as a shoulder bag. So I like this bag. I like that it's, it's different. It's experimental. I've never seen anything like it before and it makes you question what is a bag? <laughs> What is form, what is function, and what can be a bag? I like that about this, and I still use this bag regularly, 
but the fact that it's not comfortable and it's very hard to get things out of it, I wouldn't buy it again. So that's my thoughts on this bag. Small brand, upcycled. Our next bag is this cute little colorful beaded vintage bag. I'm going to guess this is perhaps from the 80s or the 90s. My fiance's grandma gave it to me. Thank you, grandma. Because she knows how much I like vintage things and things with a story. So I really appreciate that. I really like that this bag has such long handles. These are all beaded as well. And the reason is, is you can wear it as a shoulder bag. And it looks really cute as a shoulder bag. So that's my favorite thing about this. Uh, the tags on the inside say Lord & Taylor. So that's interesting to me. And grandma said that it's actually from like a New York City Lord & Taylor store. <laughs> so I find that story pretty cool too. So my cute little beaded bag. We're nearing the end, only a few left. Uh, the next bag is a yin yang. So yin yang, I always say that wrong. It's by Poppy Lissaman. I also always say that wrong too. <laughs> In any case, this is a bag by Poppy Lissaman. I believe that it's vegan leather, meaning that it's some sort of plastic. And I really like this bag. I got it to match a pair of yin yang shoes that I have. It is perfectly matches them and it has just enough room to fit anything that I might need as a handbag. I love taking this out on date nights because you can pop it right on the table and just have it sitting like this. Uh, and otherwise it is just a really a standout piece. I really enjoy this tiny little cute handbag. Populissimin is a small brand, so yet another small brand handbag. Our next bag is very interesting. It might not look like it at first. It looks like it's just a black handbag. But as you will see uh, in the ensuing video, this bag is like a mood ring. Like when you apply heat to it, it actually changes color, it changes tie-dye. I don't know if my hands are warm enough. Oh, they are. <laughs> you can now see that there's a tie-dye impression. So when you go outside in the summer, this whole bag turns tie-dye. And once you go inside a restaurant and the air conditioning's going, then it turns black again. I just, love this idea i love the idea of a piece of clothing something you're wearing a piece of art changing changing due to the environment you're in the temperature that you're experiencing i love that this is an experience uh, this is by roar vale roar vale is an image gallery on instagram and they have very many images about fashion architecture design that sort of thing and uh, they sell this very interesting bag as well Our next bag is my most used bag. It's this little Lazy Oaf penny pack. Uh, I use this all the time because uh, I could get it dirty, I could lose it. I'm not too worried about this. I could always find another fanny pack. I still love this very cute cloud print, but it's super durable and I'm not too scared about injuring, wow, uh, getting this bag dirty or damaging it or anything like that. So my most used bag is a cute fanny pack. Oh, and it's Lazy Oaf, which I believe, I'm almost certain, is also a small brand, but I will check after uh, I record this. Fanny pack. Okay, so the final bag I'm going to talk about is really a functional bag for me. Uh, everyone needs a tote. Everyone needs a tote <laughs> to carry random stuff. So I have this tote with a bunch of machine embroidered flowers on the front of it. Why is this bag functional? This is because I keep all of my sheet music in it. Um, sheet music because I started playing the harp recently just a few months ago you probably can see it in the background over there um, yeah so I need to carry all my sheet music using something so this bag generally is what I'll use and just a note on on the harp uh, yeah so I started playing the harp and it is such a joy I look forward to playing it every single day uh, I already play the piano and guitar but they never really felt like my instrument but the harp feels like my instrument it feels like i'm a part of it i've never experienced anything like that before uh, with an instrument before so i finally feel like i found my counterpart so yeah look forward to some harp videos someday when i'm comfortable enough sharing them okay so these are all of my bags let's generate the uh, wardrobe dna pie chart <laughs> yes i just came up with that right now so let's go to the excel spreadsheet generate the pie chart Okay, so this is what we're looking at. We're looking at more than half is small brands, small indie brands. So that's good, love that. 
Uh, and then the other half is partially vintage, so about 25% vintage. Yes, I used to be super into vintage, so this makes sense. We have a small piece of upcycled. This is really like small brand with upcycled materials since it's the, the plexiglass bag. And finally, we all have a very small piece, which is a big brand. That's the Furla bag. Um, I think this is fine in this case, but I try to avoid uh, fast fashion brands. I wouldn't say Furla is fast fashion, so I think that this, this is acceptable for me. <laughs> okay, cool. So these are all my bags. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all my very interesting bags. Uh, I really love finding things that make you question what is fashion? Uh, how can I wear art? What can I experience here? I love this adventure, this experimentation in the city that affords me to do this. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.